Welcome and good morning to the Community of Caring and New Salem Partnership for Business and Economic Development with New Salem, Community of Caring, and the Greater Linden Business Network. I am Monica Womack, President and CEO of Making Logistics Wow, and I would like to turn it over to Giovanni Lucas. Good morning, everyone. Uh, certainly excited to be here. Uh, it's my pleasure to, to lead the Community of Caring Development Foundation. Um, our mission it really is around creating a connected community, and we've been doing this for more than 20 years uh, for families and individuals within the Linden community. What I'm really super excited about is uh, the team's ability to create relationships and partnerships and leveraging those relationships and partnerships to really activate tactically with excellence in our community. So super excited to be here. You will see on the slide, there are four primary areas of focus that we believe are uh, extremely important in casting the vision, um, developing a community and sustaining that community um, uh, within Linden. And so we're super excited to be here, uh, excited about the linkage and the relationships and looking forward to a great discussion we will have on uh, this morning. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Giovanni. We definitely appreciate the partnership and execution. Next, we will have Carla Gwen with the Greater Linden Business Network to share her resources. Hi, um, thank you for um, allowing us to participate today. Um, Greater Linden Business Network, um, we are one of the um, organizations in Linden dedicated to helping small business owners grow, um, sustain, and connect with um, resources for their businesses. Um, we have met the benefits of joining the Greater Linden Business Network, which is listed on the slide. Um, we have valuable educational resources um, that we offer at our general membership meetings um, on the fourth Thursday of each month. So uh, please, we look forward to this presentation to share valuable information today. Thank you. Thank you, Carla. Definitely appreciate it. Next up, we will have Adam Troy, Chief Engagement Officer with the Community of Caring Development Foundation. Thanks, Monica, and good morning again to everybody. Um, this is a historic day, quite frankly. It represents an opportunity um, for us to essentially listen uh, if you go to that last bullet point, oftentimes we talk about the importance of relationships and engaging and caring. Uh, under our banner of the Community of Caring Development Foundation, our first base is to always listen. And so we know that there are a number of people, certainly inside the walls of New Salem and outside the walls of New Salem, who are entrepreneurs and small business owners. And so we wanted to take the time today to give you an opportunity to weigh in so that we understand how to bring best practices to you, additional resources, uh, more collaborations. And let me say this while I'm on the phone, Carla Gwynn and, and those who are joining us from the Greater Linden Business Network, man, we've been talking about this for a minute. I'm super excited about what I think the potential of this relationship is going to be. So any way that the foundation can continue to be supportive of the historic work that you guys are doing inside of Linden, we are absolutely there. So like everybody else on the call, man, I'm looking forward to hearing from the rest of the panelists today. Great, thank you, Adam, definitely appreciate that. So as he shared, the panelists that we have filed for you today are here to provide you resources, guidance, and information in various areas as it relates to the entrepreneurship process. Um, first up, we will have Ellen Harvey. She's a certified business advisor and capital access manager with the Ohio Business Development Center hosted by Columbus State Community College. Um, next, we will have Mary Tucker, She's the CEO and president of Executive Elite LLC and able to also provide additional insight and guidance as it relates to operating and working within the business network of um, nonprofits as well as for-profit entities. And then we will have Carla Gwen, who is an enrolled agent and she will share more about what that entails. And she's the president of the Greater Linden Business Network and franchisee of the Liberty Tech Service. So next up, we will have Ellen Harvey to share her experience and the information that she can provide to you as a business owner.
apologize for that. I wanted to talk to you about a couple of different things today. Alternative lending options. As the PPP and the EIDL programs are coming to an end as funding is running off, or you may not have been able to qualify if you showed any type of loss of income, there are other sources that are available and out there. The micro lending program is a lending program that uh, provides small bits of money to impoverished individuals who can't otherwise obtain funding through the standard channels of banking eligibility requirements. Those that have lack of collateral, limited owners, equity, credit blemishes can find their local micro lender here, ECDI, is ready and equipped to serve small businesses. Also, crowdfunding is a way that a small business can access funding. And here locally, you have Kiva Columbus. Kiva Columbus is a part of the Small Business Development Center, and it is a loan program up to $10,000. It's peer-to-peer -peer financing with no interest, no fees. Uh, it's a great loan product that's available as well. And the SBA 7A program is still available and does offer six months worth of no uh, payments for uh, if you're looking to uh, acquire a new SBA loan product right now, it can be used for startup or existing businesses. And the unemployment assistance program was also provided through the CARES Act. It is uh, supplemental to the regular unemployment uh, uh, awards that uh, we can receive. It has expanded eligibility guidelines to include self-employed and 1099 workers. Um, the extra benefit that comes through the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program is $600 uh, as a weekly benefit. Uh, this has been available since February the 2nd. It can last up to 39 weeks and um, registration was open as of May 5th for early registration and the portal for the complete application will be open next week. This program is for uh, supplemental benefits, the extra 600 from March 29th through July 25th, and it can be found on the Ohio Department of Job and Family Services website. But there are numerous resources that are available here in Columbus and throughout the state of Ohio to assist small businesses as they navigate through the COVID-19 pandemic. You have uh, federal resources like the Small Business Administration, SBDC, Women's Business Center located at ECDI and SCORE. The SBDC has received additional funding to assist uh, neighborhoods um, that were already struggling, minority and economic disadvantaged uh, businesses. With this guidance, we'll be able to help these businesses navigate through the challenges created by COVID-19 and help uh, start putting together some strategic planning on how to move forward. You have the Ohio Department of Job and Family Services that are offering resources and a new program that's created the Minority Small Business Resiliency Initiative that is um, a program that helps minorities um, leverage the opportunities that are out there and making sure that their needs are being met. This program is offered through the Central uh, to the uh, Columbus Urban League. And then you have uh, COVID-19, a great program uh, toolkit that is being offered by the Franklin County Commissioners. Um, that you can find on their website, as well as they have provided $500,000 of uh, financing to ECDI to help supplement them with a recovery loan product that is specifically to serve uh, economic disadvantaged minority women-owned businesses. So we've got some great resources here in Columbus and Ohio to assist our small businesses. Thank you. Hey, no, thank you very much, Ellen. I appreciate all the information. Uh, next up, we have Mary Tucker, CEO and President of Elite, Executive Elite LLC. Good morning, good morning. Thank you for having me. Just wanted to go over what many people or small businesses may have applied and not to get into very specific details, definitely seek any tax or legal or uh, your county advisor before engaging in any transactions, of course, but wanted to give you a summary uh, of what has happened, especially since Congress has made this ball move up and down the hill multiple times, uh, and we've seen a lot of changes day by day. And so for those of you that have already applied for the Paycheck Protection Program, either the first or second round, either as a sole proprietor or a, a regular LLC or corporation or S Corp, understanding that now it's about uh, understanding the forgiveness process and making sure that the items that you were using or had proposed to use those funds or making sure that you are using that to support the ongoing or necessary support for ongoing business. And the reason why I say that is there is a, another uh, CARES Act, if you will, uh, clause or um, 
information that was sent to everyone after people had already applied and received the funds to remind them of this owner of what we call it an attestment to state that you are using the funds to make sure that they are necessary to support your ongoing business. And if <clears throat> that clause or that statement gives you some type of pause to say, well, maybe, you know, I'm not able to be open because of the other state regulations that make sure that you are ready to open with the safety items, whether there are plexiglass and things like that, and you're not able to spend the money and you've already received it in order to support ongoing business, you're allowed to return the funds between the time of May 7th through May 14th to avoid any penalties. And I think that part is clear. Um, some people have recognized either they miscalculated uh, and or they actually were not able to hire the number of employees that may have been laid off in time to reach their eight week period. So in order to make sure that your funds uh, are forgiven and not converted into a two year term 1% interest loan, the calculations are there for various items on the payroll side. Um, not only do you need to make sure that you're looking at the number of full-time employees, but also looking at whether or not your salary or wages have remained consistent with when the quarter time period that is given within the CARES Act. And so to be able to look at that formula, you can go out to the SBA website as well. Um, the formula is not complex, but there is some division that you have to do in order to figure out whether or not you are whole within a factor of one or whether or not you're beneath that factor of one. And maybe there is some portion of your PPP funds that need to be uh, provided back or actually converted into a loan. If you're not able to do that calculation ahead of time by forecasting between the May 7th and May 14th date. Also remembering that you are able to use your PPP funds for 75% of your loan on payroll costs. Um, making sure that some of you may have 1099s and those that are not on your 941 processing for payments or even W-2s at the end of the year, you are not allowed to use the PPP funds for 1099 payments. Um, so just making sure, and I don't know if that's the buzzer for me to continue on. So um, just know that the ID, the IDL, the EIDL has stopped and that is only for agriculture now. Thank you very much, Mary. I appreciate that. Um, next up, we have Carla Gwen, uh, enrolled agent and franchisee with Liberty Tax Service. Thank you, Carla. Good morning, Mary, and thank you. Um, I am an enrolled agent, and um, I'm one of the only enrolled agents in Linden, and I'm the, also the franchisee of our um, Linden branch of Liberty Tax Service. So what an enrolled agent is, it's a tax advisor who is federally authorized um, by the U.S. Department of Treasury uh, to represent taxpayers before the Internal Revenue Service on tax issues, including audits, collections, and appeals. So um, pretty significant in that regard so that I can help area Linden um, um, individuals and businesses on all manner of tax issues. As a Linden business owner, um, I empathize with everything that's going on among COVID and um, some of the best practices um, I can get into a little bit later once we get into that discussion. But I did want to share with you in regards to some COVID-19 tax implications. So under the CARES Act, um, several tax provisions were created to give financial um, relief to small business owners. And some of those major provisions I just wanted to give you highlights of. Um, as Mary indicated, um, PPP loan forgiveness, um, it's, if you were able to um, get one of the PPP loans um, under that program, now you need to concentrate on the forgiveness. Um, as indicated, principal amounts are used for your payroll, your mortgage interest, rent, utility payments, and most of all, um, you have to make sure that you keep track during that eight week period of loan disbursement of what you spent the money for. Also, I wanted to just emphasize that the filing date was extended to July 15th, 2020. And that date includes um, the due date for um, tax payments as well. Um, there is a, the full principle of your PPP can be forgiven. Um, and you're not liable for the interest accrued over the eight week period of time um, for your PPP loan. Now, there are some tax credits that were um, 
um, created under the CARES Act. And if we can go to the next slide, please. Okay, so there was a re um, self-employment. If you owe self-employment during year 2020, um, you will you have a deferral um, period under the CARES Act that you can defer payments for your self-employment tax. Um, and how that goes is 50% of your 2020 Form 1040 um, return, which you filed in 2021. And then 25% no um, is due no later than December 31st, 2021, and so forth. Um, there is one other um, important tax implication that I wanted to talk about, and that is um, payroll credits. So there is a, if you have employees or if you're an S Corp and you are considered um, your company's employee, you can also get a 50% credit. And if you are not able to um, get approved for the PPP loan, this is another way that you can get cash into your hand um, to help with your business operations. So with that 50% credit on payroll taxes, you get a 50% credit of um, the employer portion of FICA taxes. And you can get that in the form of a refundable credit by filing form 7200. Um, so these are some valuable tax implications that will help uh, manage your cash flow as a small business and um, move forward to um, getting past the COVID-19 um, implications. Awesome. No, thank, I'm so sorry, Carl, excuse me. Thank you for the valuable information. A little bit of a delay between um, speaking, so I apologize <laughs> about that. Um, so thank you very much for all the information. Um, some of you may have seen that there is a poll that is um, going on in the background. So definitely uh, make sure that you're filling out that information and so that we can understand the dynamics as well as what the needs are within, um, within the community as it relates to being an entrepreneur. So as we're gonna go ahead and get started on the panel discussion, um, let's see here. I don't see any questions currently in the chat box, but we do have um, a couple of questions that are available. And um, one, actually I'll start with you, Ellen. We kind of go back to the top. Um, if you could please briefly describe um, the true benefit around the crowdfunding uh, piece. I know that you had mentioned earlier the, um, some of the dynamics of the program, but like specifically to a small business in the Linden area as a whole, what are some of the actual advantages and the, the largest advantage to using crowdfunding? Well, the crowdfunding platform that we have here locally, uh, the Kiva Columbus, allows them to be able to leverage the resources of social media, reaching out to friends and family, community to help support their business. Um, there eliminates the uh, eligibility requirements that we see with a lot of funding. So there is no owner's injection that is required. Um, it's not a credit uh, score or credit-based program. Um, it allows you truly to uh, take advantage of all those individuals that have said, hey, you, you've got a great idea, we wanna support you and, and have them be a part of your business. Unlike other crowdfunding uh, sources where uh, individuals are giving funds and maybe receiving something, Kiva works a little differently uh, with the funds that are provided by friends and family. It's actually loan dollars. And so they're lending to, uh, to these businesses to help them to get started or grow or expand. Um, and it is an interest-free uh, loan. So there is no interest that has to be repaid. There is no late payments on the, uh, the loan. Um, and it's something that can be utilized over and over again. So it eliminates a lot of barriers that we see uh, with some of our small businesses and the communities that we serve um, to be able to give them access to capital and, and get, them, get them really started. No, awesome. Thank you very much for sharing. Mm -hmm. um, Mary, um, if you can describe how important relationships are, specifically banking relationships, during times such as this. Absolutely. 
Um, and I think Ellen can probably add to that too. Um, <laughs> whether or not, you know, your relationship with either a major bank or a community bank, uh, we have found that, you know, relationships definitely are important. And there's, you know, we know this is supposed to be a fair process, making sure that everyone is, you know, as they receive it to put it in. But the one thing about relationships uh, is making sure that you're staying or remaining in communication with your bank. Uh, I, will, I will say that there have been community banks that have, for my clients at least, um, they have done a wonderful job of remaining in connection with the client, letting them know not only when the portal had, you know, backed up and was shut down and said, hey, you know, your application is next or, you know, I've got five or six of your applications on hold and, and they'll be approved. And so just, it was reassuring to know there were so many other people that said they had not heard from their lender, um, the information was not provided. And then also the lender will hopefully give you the information that they're expecting on the loan forgiveness side. I know that the community banks have sent that out to some of my clients as well, the entire list of what they're expecting for the forgiveness. And so that relationship is key. No, awesome. And actually, um, Ellen, if you can also take that question as well for additional guidance. Yeah, establishing and maintaining a relationship with your banking partner, like Mary said, is, is crucial. Um, businesses, when you're finding yourself in a time of need, if the bank uh, officer that you've been working with already knows about your business, already knows about um, what your needs could possibly be. In moments like these, we found a lot of the banking officers were reaching out to small businesses that they were used to working with and telling them about this program that was uh, becoming available. Prepping them ahead of time to make sure that once the, um, the portal opened up that they was able to make applications. And so we encourage our small businesses to make sure that they're developing these relationships with their uh, small business lender, that they're keeping them informed as to what's going on with their business, letting them know how their business is growing and expanding, and also keeping them informed as to when they're having challenges. All of that's important. So that if there are products like in, the, in this time that come available, that they're able to reach out to them and, and make sure that they have the resources that they need to be able to, to keep navigating. Awesome, thank you for sharing. Um, Carla, a question for you. Um, as a business owner in the lending community, tell us about the strategies you are utilizing to minimize losses at this time. Well, it's an ongoing process, but um, during this time, it, I've had to brush up my um, skills on using virtual technology like Zoom um, to engage with meetings with my clients and um, employees. Also utilizing um, secure portals um, to transfer information between our office and customers um, because of the type of information um, we, are at, we have access to. It's very important to make sure you have secure um, ways to uh, send that information back and forth um, without just using email. Also um, using virtual payment apps, you know, like Square or other ones that are out there to move money um, and take payments from customers because um, our one-on-one -on -one access to each other has um, been severely handicapped. And then gathering resources from other small business owners has really been helpful um, to find out what they're doing and utilize best practices that way. So just um, a whole host of items, but I would say out of um, most things to help alleviate any losses was, would be embracing the technology. And as Mary had talked about, maybe um, having a great relationship with your banker, um, which is the case when we were utilizing the resources for um, PPP. So, it's a whole host of things and it's an ongoing um, dynamic process where you learn something each and every day. Um, you know, the hunt for looking for hand sanitizer is real. <laughs> so <laughs> just, you know, learning and um, making sure you have open communication um, with the resources at hand. No, thank you very much for sharing. Uh, one of the other opportunities that we're seeing here as the state is seeking to um, open back up um, in some areas earlier than others, are there any concerns that you have, uh, Carla, as a business owner in this process and in this space? 
Yes, um, just from making sure that we have enough uh, disinfectants, cleaning supplies to maintain um, the cleaning process in the office. Um, we're still doing a lot of our work virtually, um, but my concern with um, everything opening up is how do we make our customers feel safe you know, to want to venture back into the office as well. So um, it's a it's a never ending process, and um, it's helpful, like I said, to get best practices from the resources at hand. No, definitely. Um, as a close, I'm going to ask uh, for each of you just to share one um, resource that you either have um, accessed or recommend uh, during this time? Um, you want me to go ahead? Um, yes, we can start with you, Carla. Thank you. So one of the resources that I would say, and it sounds small, but going back to the technology piece, using the technology that you have available to you, um, using a scan app on your smartphone, <laughs> sounds mm -hmm. kind of minute, but it's been, very helpful to make sure that you can um, capture documents and send them to your clients and you know things like that. So I would say just embracing you know the technology that you have available and learning more about it so that you're comfortable. Awesome. Um, we'll go to you, uh, Mary. Yes, absolutely. I wanted to uh, at least state to everyone record keeping will be key for the forgiveness of the Paycheck Protection Program. Absolutely. Keep Keep your records, you know, as accurate as possible, making sure that every dollar that is spent from your funds in the eight week period, which your clock will begin the, the moment that your funds are deposited into your account, you have 56 days from there. So the eight weeks converts into 56 days. That includes a weekend because there are businesses that incur costs and keep in mind that they're looking at the expenses must be incurred and paid in the 56 day period. And if you're looking for more specific uh, information and details to the incurred part versus paid as well, please go to the FDA website and it'll give you um, more details, but make sure that your record keeping is key. Good point. No, excellent point. Um, Ellen, please. Hey, to take advantage of all the, the small business need to take advantage of all the resources that are available to them on the federal, state, and local level that serve small businesses. But of course, I've got to toot our horn as far as the Small Business Development Center at Columbus State Community mm -hmm. College. On our website, there's a pre recorded webinars on how they can move forward and navigate. We have um, trainings that are still going on daily. Um, a Kiva presentation is going and showcasing what Kiva is. It's going to happen on the 15th of this month. So take advantage of the small business development services, everything that we have available, assisting with uh, navigating from this point on and accessing capital and whatever, whatever the small business needs are. No, that's awesome. Thank you. Um, actually, I will turn it over to you, Mr. Adam Troy, to final remarks. Let me uh, again thank uh, all of you uh, for participating this morning, for carving out the time. We captured a lot of really good information that hopefully, uh, even for those who were unable to join us, we can post and make available. Uh, what I'd like to do is to take a quick poll uh, by show of hands uh, from those of you who are serving as panelists uh, today, if you'd be willing to come back within the next couple of weeks and do it all over again to make sure that uh, uh, as many of our small business owners and entrepreneurs, certainly inside of New Salem and, and throughout Linden, have an opportunity to engage. Uh, so just by a show of hands, right hand, all in favor by doing it in a couple of weeks from now, raise your right hand. <laughs> Wonderful. There's a cloud of witnesses, Brother Giovanni. You see, don't you? There we go. Um, so thanks again, everybody. Um, for additional information, be sure to tie into our website at uh, callingallconnectors.org. Again, callingallconnectors.org. And um, we just want you to know that we are here um, to support you. If you're in Linden, you will begin to see, our, in fact, our signs around uh, 
starting a campaign of health and hope. So keep your heads up, small business folks. Support one another. Keep looking inward and upward, and we'll see you next time around. Thank you again.